The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and at amazon.com. This is a question from Janet. I have developed a terrible amount of laziness in the past few years. What can I do to change myself? I've tried forcing myself to do things, but that doesn't work. I would rather do nothing. Janet. Janet, the first thing I can say is you are robbing yourself of an interesting life. To do nothing day in and day out is imprisoning yourself, imprisoning yourself in your rocker or your couch or in front of the TV or in front of the computer if you're hooked to video games or whatnot. You're just, you're throwing away what could be an energized, lovely life. However, I know that there's a part of you that wants to change that wants to improve your life. And what's my evidence? Well, you took the time to email me the question. You're looking for information. So the first thing is you called yourself lazy. When we label ourselves, it's really hard to get out of that. Now, lazy means you're you're resistant to work or any exertion, and you're disposed to idleness. That's the dictionary definition, or you're very slow moving, you're sluggish. Now, assuming it's not a medical issue, what would cause a person to be slow and sluggish and just resistant to any effort? What would cause that? Well, how do you motivate yourself? If you are motivating yourself the following way, I will give you the good housekeeping seal of approval that it will backfire and you will rebel against yourself. And undermine your own happiness. So here's the following. If you're motivating yourself by duty, I should go, I should do more with my life. I've got to figure out what career I want. I have to go back to the gym. I must push myself to clean my house. I ought to pay more attention to my kids. You hear those words, should, got to, have to, push myself, ought to. It feels like you're pushing yourself from the outside, forcing yourself to live your life like a critical parent. Get out there, get off the couch, do something with your life. It's the language of duty. The good news is that you can say no to that language with even that language, not just to a parent, but within your own head without sabotaging yourself. You want to use a cognitive therapy skill called reframing it. You can say to yourself, listen, I've been trying to push myself to do things. I've run that experiment long enough and guess what? It's not working. I also label myself as lazy, which only solidifies me as a sluggish slouch. I can't say that slouch. So if you adopt what's called a learning stance, you adopt a different attitude towards your own life. And you want an attitude that my values matter, like we had in the clip from the Fountainhead a moment ago, that your sense of personal value really matters. You want to develop yourself into a passionate valuer. Now, you're not going to do it all at once. You can start small with little small values. Uh, But you don't want the attitude that you can't do anything. Now, why would anybody self-sabotage? If you've been brought up to think that it's selfish to pursue your own goals, and the only reason to take any action is if you're helping mom out or if you're helping your neighbors out or if you're helping the, I don't know, strangers out or people you've never seen, then you might rebel. You might say, what about me? And then you feel selfish and then you retreat and then you sit on the couch and do nothing and then you become a lazy, what? A lazy person. That type of philosophy won't get you very far. If you have a different philosophy, this is my only life. I want to make it interesting, a little more interesting. In what areas? What would I enjoy in terms of jobs or a career? That may take some thinking on your your part, Janet. What would I like in terms of my home? Would I like it a little more organized? Would I like to um, decorate something, decorate my bedroom, make it a little more fun? Would I like a romantic relationship? Now, you want this more. You want a decent romantic relationship more when you feel better about yourself. What leisure activities may I enjoy? So you can read The Fountainhead. That helped me tremendously. The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand helped me tremendously. And my co-author and I also wrote the book, The Selfish Path to Romance, How to Love with Passion and Reason. And the first person you want to learn to love is 
yourself. That's why we titled it The Selfish Path to Romance. We don't mean the mean, rotten way to romance. We mean the self-respecting way to romance. My co-author is Dr. Ed Locke. Uh, You can get that at Amazon or drkenner.com or selfishromance.com. So we have a whole section on how to make yourself lovable and how to become a passionate valuer. Now here's another question that I received from Corey. Dear Dr. Kenner, I'm a gay guy. With regards to love, I feel I'm irrational. I'm 27 and I always wanted to date guys. I always want to date guys in their late teens. I think it's questionable that dating younger men will make me happy. I don't think that I want to grow up, but rather that I'm superficial and find them to be cuter than guys my age range. I feel I can never be happy in a relationship if I don't change. But it's so hard. What can I do, Corey? Corey, whether you're gay or not, you are right in that you won't achieve any lasting happiness with the thinking methods that you're currently using. And change will be impossible because you don't know how, what the proper thinking methods are or how to use them to facilitate your goal. And that's the first question you want to ask yourself. What is my goal? And you might say it's a good romantic relationship with a partner. I will say you can't start there. There's a deeper goal that you will want, and that's how do I understand myself? How can I introspect and identify the core ideas that I'm holding, my core ideas about myself, about romance, and that will help me solve the riddle of why I'm attracted to younger men and at least give me that self-understanding. So there's a great book you can get, Mind Over Mood by Dennis Greenberger and Christine Podetsky. You can get it at my website, drkenner.com. If you're holding deep-seated ideas such as I'm inadequate, I'm unlovable, I'm unworthy, you know, maybe you had some trauma in your past or maybe you just concluded that on your own. You will learn how to challenge that and how to repair yourself and how to improve yourself uh, with that book, Mind Over Mood. If you think that you're only superficially attracted to these guys, you need to know why you're set, why you're... Um, robbing yourself of genuine romance. So I hope that helps. You can look up those books. Uh, You can look up my book too, The Selfish Path to Romance. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner at The Rational Basis of Happiness. And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner. You've heard me preaching it for years, but you didn't have the wits to know what you were hearing. Why do you suppose I denounced greatness and praised mediocrities like you? Great men can't be ruled. Why did I preach self-sacrifice? If you kill a man's sense of personal value, he'll submit. And that is from one of the worst villains in all of literature. That is from, I won't tell you his name, but that's the villain in Ayn Rand's book, A-Y-N-R-A-N-D, two different, uh, that's her first and last name, The Fountainhead. And that's the point of that book is never to let anybody kill your sense of personal value. Don't submit. Don't throw away your life. Don't throw away your ambition, your goal, your dreams, your uh, your dreams in many areas, whether it's career or friendships or your children or uh, leisure activities or hobbies. Don't apologize for the good within you and enjoy your success. You can enjoy it unapologetically. However, That takes courage. That takes courage in learning a philosophy that doesn't tell you to submit, that doesn't make you crush your own values. And, of course, I highly recommend that book. It's on my website, drkenner.com, and there's a lot more information on my website. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com, and please listen to this ad. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com, and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance. The Serious Romance Guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and co-author Dr. Edwin Locke. Partners need to communicate constantly, but most do not. Why is communication not a conscious priority? Most partners feel that because they're in a settled relationship, they no longer need to talk as much about their feelings toward one another. They focus on everyday practical matters, yes, but expressions of tenderness, concern, and interest in one another's lives go untended. They go on automatic and don't talk unless their subconscious mind happens to feed them something. 
It is precisely because they are in love that partners need to communicate in order to maintain and deepen that love. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com. And you can buy The Selfish Path to Romance at amazon.com.